Yo, welcome back everybody. It's day four patch release season. We've had three days worth of patch notes. If you haven't gotten the routine by now, you probably haven't been watching the previous videos. But if you're looking for elementals, you're looking for demons, you're looking for mech, or you're looking for just what, what is going on with trinkets, consult the previous videos. Today is Naga and Quillbore. So I'm not going to do an intro on every single video. It's the exact same. If you just want this document, below in the, in the comments and in Discord. All right, let's go. Naga. Naga Lesser Trinket. Remember, Lesser Trinkets turn six. Greater Trinkets are offered to you on turn nine. You just buy them for the amount of gold that's in the shot uh, above the portrait. You pick one of four that are offered to you. You play the game. It's basically like having two little quest rewards added to the, the board state game after game after game. Naga. Getting a nice little interesting combination over here. Replica th Cathedral. Your first spell each turn cast twice. Remember, this was a quest reward, and it was one of the best quest rewards. The ability to double trigger some, some spells is incredibly good. Like, say, for example, consuming a minion and spitting its stats. Turning a minion golden with, like, eyes. Turn a random minion golden, I should say, in the tavern. Like, the ability to cast spells twice, incredibly powerful. In the middle of the game, if you don't have a lot of good spells, then you could use it for blood gems. You could use it for spellcraft spells. You can use it for anything. Any spell doesn't specify, but a lot of value there. Rusty Trident. Start of combat, give your Naga death rattle, get a random spellcraft spell. Aw. Uh, spellcraft spells kind of suck at the beginning of the game. But it could be a lot of Coomer spells. You could just get Crooner Zesty Shaker off the ground. Or we could take a peek ahead and say, what does the game look like in terms of Naga? Ooh, this is back. Ooh, Critter Wrangler's back. Suddenly, getting spellcraft spells looks a lot better when you have the ability to scale permanently off of triggering spellcraft spells. Zesty Shaker allows you to duplicate a spell. Athissa gives you four 1 1 buffs each time. Anything that's targetable gives you an additional 2 2, even if the, the, uh, the initial spellcraft spell is temporary, that 2 2 buff is permanent. We don't have Myrmidon, no more Silent Swimmer, no more Slither Spear, and no more, no more Salivas, or Salivas, <laughs> and no more Myrmidon. So just kind of a, an overall glance here. Also, Warden of Old coming back in Spellcraft form. Very, very different card that used to exist as a three-star Death Rattle, get a coin added to your hand. Now is three-star nerfed to 2-2, two -two, Spellcraft gain one gold. So it still gives you the gold, but in a different manner. Also, Snail Cavalry getting his time in the sun. Look at this. One star Snail Cavalry permanently scaling by 1-1. One, one. Get yourself an early Spellcraft spell. And suddenly the Snail through the middle of the game. And I shouldn't say suddenly. The Snail gradually over the middle of the game gets bigger. But thematically, like a Snail, it does it at a Snail's pace. And while it could be a pretty good one star in the middle of the game, kind of similar to the one star Dragon that gets a 1-1 one, one depending on what tavern tier you're on, and gets better value as you level. It might last slightly longer on the board than most one stars. It's probably not going to do too much unless you triple it. And even then, it's probably just mid-game power, right? Last but not least, the new minion, Volcanic Visitor. Spellcraft, choose one, give you minions plus two attack, or plus two health until next turn. Big overall buff, plus two health to a lot of minions, plus two attack, especially if you have Divine Shields on the board. Could be a lot of power for a three-star minion in the mid-game. And so our spellcraft added. Anyway, kind of important to know what minions are in the tribe before we look at these, these guys right here because Rusty Trident all of a sudden looks way better, right? When Critter Wrangler and Athissa are in the game, having all of your Naga generate random spellcraft spells is insane. It's actually just, it's fucking nutty. You mean my seven Naga board gets to have seven random spells that all give plus four, four to the buff or four one ones, I should say to the board when I play them the next turn. Yeah, sure. I would love to have this passive get four spellcraft or seven spellcraft effects. Also a 28, 28 per turn per Athissa. <laughs> That's insane. But do you know you're going to be an Athissa board at the time that you take this? Not really. Is it really good in the middle of the game? Not really, but it still gives you something. And most of the spellcraft spells at least have a little bit of value, especially if you can get up to Tavern 5. Tavern 2, Tavern 1, Tavern 3, not great. Then again, no Myrmidon on Tavern 1 anymore, so like at least you took away one of the bad spells. Lore Walker Scroll. Whenever you cast a spell on a minion, give it a 2-2. Two -two. 
permanent 2-2 two -two when you cast a spellcraft spell. Permanent 2-2 two -two when you cast a tavern spell that targets a unit. Permanent 2-2 two -two when you play a blood gem. I have a lot of crossover here between like blood gem and, and spellcraft spells. Probably why they grouped Quilbor and Naga on the same day of releases. Weird. And the big boy. Zesty Shaker Portrait. Get a Zesty Shaker. Your Zesty Shakers give an extra copy of the spell. I heard you guys like the Thissa meta. So I got oh, a Thissa meta. What am I saying? Ashara meta. I heard you guys like Ashara meta. So we got you an Ashara meta for after Buddy meta leaving. So go get Coomer. Go get Zesties. Gold your Zesties. Look for eyes, whatever it might be. Find a way to snapshot stats. Oh, wait. That's probably why they moved Shellemental up to Tavern 6. Yeah, yeah. I think they've already done one balance patch on this one internally because this is not okay. <laughs> that level of stats that can be generated off of just getting Coomer early and then being able to get 3, 6, 13, or 12, 16, 18, I don't know, whatever. Multiples of 3. Threes or fours, I suppose, with the golden one. Copies of Spellcraft spells played per Zesty Shaker on the board is uh, is silly when it comes to Deep Blue, right? Deep Blue Crooner, getting bigger every time you cast it, having extra copies of that spell just makes it accelerate even faster, even faster, even faster. You just got to find a way to cash in on the stats. Whether it's putting down a couple Lava Lurkers and just sacking or taking the last two Odins and keeping them permanently, or finding yourself like a shell elemental, casting it in the shop, and then snapshotting that, that stat line. You can usually find a way. Bellbore is gone, remember, so you don't have that method of snapshotting. And shell elemental is on Tavern 6 now, so it's no longer nearly as easy. But still, insanely good value if you can find a way to cash in on it. Greater Trinkets for Naga. Bigger Lower Walker Scroll. Spellcraft spells can give you 5-5s five permanently. Glow Scale Portrait. Get a Glow Scale. And your first spellcraft enchantment each turn is permanent. All right, so you immediately think divine shield my entire board. That's also a way to snapshot blood gems, though, or uh, blood gems. What am I saying? Snapshot uh, deep blue spell with shaker. So you could put one or two divine shields on the board, and also then just like start snapshotting a hundred hundreds. Albeit it would be the first one played in a turn, which kind of sucks, and it would also be be the only one that you snapshot instead of getting something like a like a shell elemental to be able to snapshot everything hmm seems pretty good though full shield or full board of divine shields on a board state that is typically big stats is really nothing to scoff at on the other hand you are telegraphing pretty hard in uh, it's a very similar to quest meta the interface for for trinkets where if you cursor over your opponent you can see what trinkets they have so as soon as you see somebody has glow scale portrait, you're going to buy ghoul immediately. It's like seeing George as your opponent. You're like, yep, mm -hmm. I'm going to ghoul you. <laughs> so maybe overkill trying to divine shield your entire board. You might want to just take one or two on key minions and then just start snapshotting stats somewhere if you can. And last but not least, spite scale sushi roll. Get a spite scale special. Spite scale special is the four star tavern spell that reads get three random spellcraft spells. I think I remember correctly. Yeah, I have an image of it. There you go. I prepped, guys. I did it. <laughs> I prepped. I did my job. There's the Spite Scale Special. Could have put it on the screen, I suppose, but good enough for the video. And the Spite Scale Special generates three Spellcraft spells. Those Spellcraft spells trigger twice, and you can see where this is going. Your Spellcraft spells trigger twice. You generate Spellcraft spells. Every time you cast a spellcraft spell, which is triggering twice, you get additional one ones. You can just generate a handful of spellcraft spells. Those spellcraft spells give you stats based upon how many Athissas you have. Say you just have one Athissa, you have seven Naga on the board. The seven Naga death rattles seven spellcraft spells. Then you get double triggers for each of those, along with the spite scale special that you have here. For the first turn for the big stat line. Then each turn afterwards, you got yourself, what is that, 14 triggers at 4-4 four, four piece. You're talking about like 60-60 stats just from one of this uh, per turn. 
God forbid you're playing anything else like Orgazoa and now to discover two Naga, which in turn gives you more chances to find more Athissa and more spellcraft spells, and you see the snowball. The snowball starts rolling and it gets out of hand. That's Naga's general theme here. This is going to be like this. This has always been a snowball condition. Orgazoa plus Athissa equals snowball. Because this card, if you can get enough copies, just generates so much stuff, and this gives you the tempo you need in the middle of the game. All right, go into Quillbore. Quillbore be a little bit easier to do because there's some repeats like Replica Cathedral over here. Why do we put the sticker as the first one? Typically, I put the fun ones at the end of the sections. Probably because Great Boar sticker ain't so great. Great Boar sticker, your blood gems give an additional three attack. Cool, I suppose. Yay. But like, couldn't it at least be like 3-1? Can't it be like a little health or something, Bob? Make the Great Boar great again. Let's be real. Lore Walker Scroll, repeat as well. Augie Bank. Start of combat, give your cool board death rattle, get a blood gem. Whoa, now that's good. Now that's some good shit right there. Stop reading the fourth one, the last one, guys. I know it's broken, okay? Let's focus on the hogger, the hoggy bank first. Hoggy Bank, give your de Quillbore a death rattle, get a blood gem. You ever play your scaling Quillbore comps and you have to spend all of your resources in the middle of the game to make your blood gems big? And then you get to the end of the game and you're like, I gotta find generation. You're desperately clawing to find a good battle cry or whatever. Well, no longer. Just play your scaling cards. Be happy with them. Find your brand. Do whatever you want to do. Your Quillbore on the, on the board, they're just going to be death rattling those blood gems to your hand. The more blood gems you have, the more stats you have in the mid-game, the more you survive to be able to scale even further. Shockingly, Quillbore has already been a pretty snowball-y board. That's a lot of power in the middle of the game to enable being greedy. Or, you can just get the Quilligraphy set. What a name for a, for a trinket. Quilligraphy set. Avenge 4, win the lobby. Alright, let's go next. Somebody got Quilligraphy. It's like every patch, you know, you see a couple of them and you go, you scratch your head and you're like, what are the devs thinking? Um, how is this balanced? Avenge four, get a pokey proc on turn six. Yeah, it's a good thing. There's no death rattle or, or reborn or whatever minions in the game. Surely we won't have potential of two, two and a half three procs on some board states per turn. And even once you stabilize and you start playing Quillbore, you still get a couple minions to die each turn. Honestly, to win off a of Quillbore, you only really need about 10-10 in Blood Gem stats, and then you just play like the typical late-game cards. The Pokey, the, the Ragug, the Drakari, the Bran plus Battlecry Generator, Murkai, or whatever combo you have in the lobby that you're in. We had a game yesterday, we were playing Memon on stream, where our, we had a Rylek combo give us 6,000 health to the board off of Quillbore. <laughs> like, you don't really need, you don't need help to Quillbore right now. Crazy bullshit already happens. Giving them passive all of the scaling you need over the course of the game on turn six is just insanity. This could be Avenge 7, and I don't even think it's weak. Avenge 4 is nuts. It could be half the scaling and still be playable. Greater Trinkets. Better Lore Walker Scroll. Remember, Lore Walker Scroll works on uh, blood gems. So every blood gem you play gives an additional 5-5 five five is, is not a trivial amount of stats. Albeit, it has to be a blood gem that you manually play. Can't use like Brand to play Battle Cry Generate, like the AoE Battle Cry, give a blood gem to all your minions type stuff and get that effect. So it's not nearly that good, but still. Very universally strong card, works for spellcraft spells, works for blood gems, works for spells in general. Could be a lot of things with brand generation that you could target units on the board. Ooh, look, a golden quilligraphy set. To be fair, this probably isn't as big of a problem. It's turn nine when you're getting this. If you're still scaling blood gems, that's great. That's cool. We get a win more. But getting quillbore blood gem scaling while your board is just temporary minions, while everybody is kind of mid power trying to find a way to play for direction. Versus when people are going all in to win the lobby is a very different story, right? Yeah. When you're ahead, you're just going to take it and get even further ahead. But uh, I think there's other, other things that we can do in the game that are probably more beneficial by that point. Still, very, 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 very good for Quillbore. 
just not game like breakingly broken like like its little brother is. Great boar sticker. Your blood gym's given an extra four four. Man, it really feels like some of these are out of touch, doesn't it? You look at one that's like in one combat gain permanent four four, or just gain four four. This one costs six. This one costs three. Really feels like we might be missing the boat over here. Now, that being said, there is a desperation time where you're like, I'm dying, I'm dying, I don't have time to, to greed this for a couple turns. Give me my blood gem value and give it to me now. It's, it's rare, but like it's possible that's better than this in certain scenarios. Feels like we need a couple tuning passes here with Quillbore. Jar O Gems. After two friendly minions attack each combat, play a blood gem on all your Quillbore. All right, so like basically passive Bristlebok value. Instead of the minions dying, it's minions attack. It's kind of insane with the right board state, albeit it is no permanent scaling. Nothing that happens in combat is going to stay, right? But if you have some kind of like uh, tough tusk reset type of board, your minions having the ability to just get blood gems rained upon it twice is potentially resets for tough tusk. The fact that it's limited to two means you can't just keep doing that and Tough Tusk's attack all day. Farm the little minions board. But it is resets for Tough Tusk, which is pretty good. Increase unit count on the board. Just kind of mid compared to the amount of power that you can get off of these spells, though. Or these artifacts, or these trinkets, or these augments, or whatever you want to call them. And then the last two. The last two are kind of silly. Blood Gem Sticker. A Blood Golem Sticker. Whenever your friendly Quillbore dies, summon a Golem with stats equal to its blood gems. So you have a 100 100 Quillbore on the board that's been buffed 95 95 by blood gems. The 100 100 Quillbore dies and its death rattle will spawn in 95 95. So as long as you have your blood gems somewhat consolidated on minions, you're going to spawn three. Minions that are effectively all of the blood gem value you've generated over the course of the game. It's going to be really awkward with things like Charlie, which would trigger at the end of the turn and make sure every minion has a blood gem on it. Now, to be fair, it does say friendly Quillbore, so like if you use it, if you're worried about like your Drakari or something like that, might have blood gems on it. Don't have to worry about that. You can keep Quill or Pokey, Pokey. What am I saying? Charlie without blood gems pretty easily. And then the other minions on the board, three of them die and. You get a big blood gem stack that spawns as an extra minion. Super good against scam boards. Super good against like glass cannon dragons and those kind of things where increasing unit count is the way to beat them. But just a lot of value, right? Cool board just based around making big cool board or big blood gems right now. Now you have the ability to get three more minions that are effectively the additive stats of all of the blood gems that you've played over the course of that game. Yeah, I think I'll take that. Double blood gem effect is pretty good. And last but not least, Arguably the most broken thing in the game up to this point. Conductor Portrait. This is going to be the <laughs> I win the game for free line. If you can get this line online early enough, this is turn 9 after all. Holy moly is this a lot of stats. Get a Snarling Conductor. Whenever you discard a card, play a Blood Gem on all your minions. So... Stack Starling Conductors and the little three star that discards cards to put blood gems in your hand. Dump the ever living shit out of the, min the the cards in your hand and then just AOE rain blood gems down on your board. God forbid you get this combo with this card. In the middle of the game, you just go up, you look for your, your cards that you're already playing. Like Starling Conductors are already super common card in the game. It's one of the best four stars in the game. You got one or so of those minions along with the Snarling Conductor. You make it through the next turn and then you just rain three, four blood gems down on your board. Scaled at whatever rate it already is. Passively scaling and at the same time the Snarling Conductor gives you four extra gold per trigger. Yeah, okay. I'll take double the amount of gold per turn or triple the amount of gold per turn and passively scale my board by one, two, three, four procs per turn. <laughs> sure, I'll take all those blood gems for free. Yeah, okay. It's just like Pokey and like this kind of stuff is like Pokey Charlie comp just by hitting good trinket synergy. 
Do you need the sixes? Nah, I can live with threes and fours and can do it just fine and make thousands of stats on the board. Oh, and have a bunch of gold in the process. What am I going to do with it? I'm just going to go continuously scale my blood gems. Like, say, for example, the new Fearless Foodie. Four star, cool boar. Your blood gem, or choose one. Your blood gems have an extra one, one. So basically a double proc for the, the plus health buffer and the plus attack buffer. Or you can just take four blood gems for, for the turn. Which could be really good in certain scenarios as well, right? Generate four blood gems with like this quest could be silly. Because then it's just four blood gem buffs plus five five on each of them. Maybe sometimes you just really desperately need blood gems because you need to be strong and you don't need your blood gems to be bigger. And you can just cycle the card and sell it through. You can't really play it with Rattleck or Stack of Brand or anything like that because it's a choose one effect. But still, very strong. And Hot Air Surveyor. This card is effectively replacing Rigug. Rigug. That is in the Remove Minions section. Blood Gems played from your hand, cast an extra time. No more Divine Shield existing on Tavern 4 to be able to double the Blood Gems played on it. A much weaker version, and up on 5. But still, if you have hand, Blood Gem generation to hand, like add 4 Blood Gems to hand, that's a lot of power right there. Thorn Captain coming back on Tavern 1, and of course Felbor was removed. We knew that when Demons were already shown, but no consuming the Tavern with all of those Blood Gems. Sag, no thousands and thousands of stats. This would not be okay in this meta, given how easy tavern buffing is. Anyway, that's it. Insanity. Crazy. Naga. Good. Divine Shield everything. Get tons of scaling. Quillbore laugh and shrug as you get Quilligraphy set and win the lobby. <laughs> I feel like this is just like, this is one of the bigger outliers we've seen. This one here and the magnetic generator, greater Greater uh, Trinket from Mechs. And the chess set neutral right now are probably the front runners for the most broken things in the game. Quilligraphy set. The ability to just tutor golden beatboxer triple combo. And the ability to duplicate minions, especially with things like the new Pogo Hopper existing in Mechs. Oh, and probably should include Fellblood in that conversation because it's so easy and so straightforward. Even if it doesn't just dominate late game it's going to win the middle of the game so hard you're going to get great placement off of it yeah we got some craziness coming there's going to be a lot we're only halfway through the reveals let's probably not do too much balance analysis until we actually see the entire entire set right once we get done with all of the the release days we'll do a a tier list or whatever prediction tier list for funsies so y'all can laugh when i'm like well calligraphy sets the most busted thing ever and it ends up being f tier you know for some odd reason, it just doesn't work. And then everybody can laugh at me, you know? That's the way it goes. Anyway, have a great weekend, guys. I will be back again tomorrow with the uh, the next one. Whatever the next one is. I forget what tomorrow's release is. We'll figure it out tomorrow. Another tribe coming halfway through. See you guys. Take care. Have a great night. And peace.